Hello and welcome to Firepower Device Manager's Identity Policy and Active Authentication Learning Module. This video is part of the mini-series called Cisco Firepower Device Manager. If you haven't already, please at least take a look at the introduction video to get an overview of what is the Firepower Device Manager. It is a new web-based simplified device manager to manage Cisco's integrated next generation firewall or Firepower Threat Defense software offering. In this session, we will look at how to use identity policy to detect the user associated with a threat. For example, you can identify who owns the host targeted by an intrusion event and who initiated an internal attack or a port scan. You can also identify high bandwidth users and users who are accessing undesirable websites or applications. FDM today supports establishing of user identity through active authentication. With active authentication, when an HTTP traffic flow comes from an IP address for which the system has no user identity mapping, you can decide whether to authenticate the user who initiated the traffic flow against a directory configured for the system. If the user successfully authenticates, the IP address is considered to have the identity of the authenticated user. Failure to authenticate does not prevent network access for the user. Your access rules ultimately decide what access to provide these users. For user identity, you can use a Microsoft Active Directory with identity policies. However, note that if you want to perform user control on user groups or on users within the groups, you must configure user groups on the directory server. When you configure directory properties, you need to specify the common base distinguished name, the base DN for users and groups. The base is defined in your directory server and differ from network to network. You must enter the correct basis for identity policies to work. If the base is wrong, the system cannot determine user or group names, and thus the identity base policies will be inoperable. With that, let's jump into the demo. We will use this demo topology to demonstrate identity policy and active authentication. In this session, we will navigate to identity policy screen and follow a wizard to configure the Active Directory server. We will also add the server side certificate and key. We'll go back to the test configuration for directory, server and test it. And then we will move on to create an identity rule followed by an access rule to block the investment AD group from accessing match.com. We will log in through a PC as a user who's a part of the investment group and tries to go to match.com and verify that the connection is blocked. And we will see this in the dashboard and the events as well. So going back to our demo topology, I do have an Active Directory server running on the inside and a PC2, which is part of the domain. It has a user IRA, which belongs to the investment group on the AD server. And to test identity policy with active authentication, we will be creating an identity policy and an active control policy to block user in the investment group from accessing math.com. For the purpose of this testing or demo, we will also add a certificate and key file, which the browser or the user agent of the user's browser will trust when the firewall intercepts the traffic and sends them an authentication request for active authentication. So here is our device dashboard. Let's go to policies.
And in identity policy, let's get started by using the get started wizard. The first step is to add our Active Directory configuration. So input your company's Active Directory credentials and configuration here. And make sure to have the correct base DN name. You could upload an SSL certificate here, or you could even select an encryption if your AD supports it. Hit next. And this is where you want to add the server certificate that the user agent or the individual's browser needs to trust when the firewall intercepts and redirects the traffic. So let's select our certificate and keep here. And notice the default port is 885. You could even skip this step and use the internally generated self-signed certificate. Now, let's go ahead and test our Active Directory connectivity. Let's hit test. Once the test is successful, we note that the users have been downloaded. Now let's create our identity rule for active authentication. Notice you can also fall back as guest if your active auth failed. You do have that option. Let's leave everything else default for the purpose of this demo and hit OK. Next, let's go to access control tab and add our access control rule to block access by investment to match.com. Let's go to users and search for our investment group which was downloaded once the AD connectivity was successful. Let's turn on some logging. And in applications, remember to select, filter and select match.com. These applications are also pre-downloaded and provided by Cisco Talos. Notice the topology view shows the flow of the access control, where we've selected one user from blocking access to one application. Remember, if you don't change the order of the access rule, by default, it is added at the bottom. But let's go ahead and change that to order one. Let's go ahead and deploy these changes. Notice that the deploy button had a highlight next to it showing that there were deployments pending. Once the deployment is successful, let's go ahead and test our identity policy. Let's go to PC2 and log in as Ira, who belongs to the investment group on our AD server. Let's go to Firefox and try to access match.com. Notice the authentication required prompt that popped up, redirecting it to a URL, HTTPS URL, to the inside of the firewall. You add your username and password. And notice that because we had an access control policy to block that access, Ira, who belonged to investment group, was unable to access match.com. Let's look at some monitoring and events dashboard. If you notice under users, you will see an entry for Ira and she will be logged in for the next 24 hours and access to browse as per the access control policies. 
you can see the web categories and the applications for that user. Under events, we can check some connection events that took place to match.com. Since we have all these events, let's pause and create a filter with the rule action to block so we can find our match.com event. Here you go. You can click on view details to actually get details about the event. We see the user with IRA, which policy was applied and which firewall policy rule was hit when she tried to access match.com and further details on the application, the responder, and traffic. You can even go to the network view dashboard and this is pretty much an overview of the network in terms of policies, users, applications, and much more. Thank you for joining me today in our demo for identity policy and active authentication for Firepower Device Manager. And don't forget to be on the lookout for our other videos to learn more about Firepower Device Manager. Thank you again.